Hey again, if you have been around on YouTube, you have probably heard some of these phrases. The tunnels are so broken. Bro, I should be running trains more often. It's actually such a good way to get scrap and comps. Legend says that tunnel dwellers actually shit scrap. But is it actually true? Is it the best place to be in order to get scrap? And how much exactly can you earn? Before we test it out, I want to wish you a happy new year. I hope you have a wonderful 2022. Also, in case you noticed a change in my voice, it is because of a new mic. Hey, who put that? Okay, let's just move underground. Since the train tunnels contain NPCs, we first need to decide what is the best weapon to take in order to clear them. I ran a couple of tests and realized that tunnel dwellers have less protection on their head compared to the body and legs, excluding the damage multiplier. So you should always be trying to headshot them if you haven't been already. What you really want here is for the dweller to die from two headshots. In that case, the best weapon is M39 or AK, but since they are hard to get, you can choose SAR instead. However, SAR will only double headshot kill the NPCs from up close. Python is a good and cheap pistol ammo option since it does more damage than M39 and can even kill the dweller with a headshot body shot from up close. Some of you might be saying, oh but I'm just a simple roof camping grub with 3k hours of experience in sniping naked on the beach. I don't want to risk going out and losing my guns. It's okay my friend. I will also look into crossbow and nail gun aka the primitive AKL9 combo clearing speeds. The train tunnel has three places where the loot spawns. Number one, station marked by a station sign on the map. Two, barricade stop marked as a wider track on the map. And three, mini spawns on the tracks. The station contains 7 to 11 crates and 5 to 9 dwellers. Barricade stop has 3 to 8 crates and 2 to 5 dwellers. I would definitely recommend stopping in all the stations and barricade stops. Mini spawns however are optional since they are not marked on the map. Based on my calculations I have estimated what is the scrap worth of a single crate and tunnel dweller body. Here you can see how much they are worth on average after recycling and also selling items on Bandit. Important to note is that Tunnel Dweller also gives 55.8 cloth on average, which is probably the best way of getting cloth apart from growing hemp. If you are curious how I came down to these numbers, you can check my previous video on Blue Card Monuments. If we add these numbers together, we can see that one train station yields around 409 scrap on average and barricade stop 223 scrap on average. The only thing that is missing is to calculate how much time does it take to clear the tunnel. This highly depends on your skill and number of players in your team. Alright team, let's go. Team? Oh, that's right. I don't have a team. In that case, let's assume that you're an average solo player with a SAR. I came down to an average clearing time of 3 minutes and 13 seconds for the station and 1 minute 50 seconds for the barricade stop, including finding your train. If I use M39 Hollow, then my clearing time is 17% faster and if I use a Python, it takes me 12% more time. Let's not forget our Primlocked fellows out there. With crossbow nail gun, it took me 6 minutes to clear the station on average, which is 86% slower than using a SAR. Keep in mind that you also need to bring more cloth to bandage while clearing it this way. And if you decide to harvest the dwellers for 5 cloth, it will take you even longer. It is also good to mention that when harvesting, you don't need to fully clear the body. You should only hit the scientist until you get 5 cloth when using a knife or hatchet because the rest will just be bone fragments anyway. Unless of course you're some sort of a bone collector and need it for your chamber of secrets. If we now add the time to our calculation we can see that the average scrap per second is 2.12 for the station and 2.03 for the barricade stop if using a SAR compared to 1.14 and 1.31 with Crossy Nailgun. 
What we also need to consider is the time needed to travel from one station to another. I came down to 43 seconds as the time needed to travel from one stop to another on average. If we assume that the player is clearing two stations and one barricade stop, then it should take him almost 10 minutes with the SAR and more than 16 minutes with the Prem Kit. So if we look at the scrap per second, it goes down to 1.79 scrap per second with the SAR and 1.07 scrap per second with the crossbow. So at this point you're probably thinking, that's a lot of numbers, but what does this actually mean? Well, if we compare it to blue monuments, you can see that the scrap per second is mostly lower in train tunnels. But you need to consider that the blue monuments can only be looted every 30 or so minutes and more often than not you will find them already empty. Whereas in train tunnels there is no cap on how much loot you will find because you can keep doing it constantly. The only thing that is stopping you is your inventory space and that grub with DB and grenades at the top of the station. Let's put things in perspective. With a SAR and no major interruptions, you can earn around 6k scrap worth of resources per hour, which is a crazy amount. So if you need a lot of scrap or cloth in short time, train tunnels is the best bet for you. But if you just need some scrap every now and then and you live next to a blue monument, you can also just keep running it on respawn. So the answer to the question, are the train tunnels the best place for scrap? If you look at the scrap per hour, nothing even comes close, but it has its own risks. If you look at the scrap per second, then there are other good options how to get by. In the end of the day, it all depends on your playstyle and skill. Let me know if you find this useful and leave a like if you want to see more guides like this.